I'd like to start with our very first presentation. We're delighted to have Shegun Awalowo, Executive Director and Chief Executive Officer at the Nigeria Export Promotion Council. Um, as a lawyer, Shegun has a very long uh, career. Um, he has worked as a special assistant for a number of Nigerian presidents. And since 2013, he has been head of the Nigeria Export Promotion Council and is a key driver of the Zero Oil Initiative. And I believe he's going to talk about that now. So uh, there will be a Q&A afterwards. Please do submit your questions. Uh, but Shegun, if you'd like to give your presentation, you have 10 minutes. Thank you very much. Um, uh, first, let me uh, rest on the existing protocols and to thank EcoBank for, for, for this. Uh, EcoBank is uniquely positioned to in facilitating cross-border trade within our region and uh, leveraging on your various trade solutions and your payment methods. I think uh, it's fair to say EcoBank will really drive the uh, Inter-Africa trade force. Let me also greet uh, the MD, uh, Mr. Patrick Akimuton, and the group managing uh, group executive officer, Mr. Deemi, uh, for this. Um, if you permit me, I'll just like to share my my screen now. The focus of today, the main attention is the AFTA, uh, and uh, I can tell you that. Uh, I'm a member of the National Action Committee uh, for, for this, and we have a, also a member of the Sterling Committee, and we'll ha be having the, the meeting, uh, in fact, this afternoon. So, um, and I will be really delighted uh, to listen through out the contributions and the various presentations and this will form part of what i will take back this afternoon at three o'clock to the uh, national action sterling committee uh, nigeria zone for the afta to discuss this well let me start by saying look the situation on ground uh mr patrick had said it very well we have a combined gdp of some three million uh, US dollars, and it's a huge potential for Nigeria to increase our exports to Africa. Most of our exports have been informal exports, and with platforms like the one EcoBank has, uh, it's going to be uh, of real value to us. You can see our figures. This is the value of Nigerian exports, uh, totaling about some seven million, uh, seven billion dollars, while exports to the rest of the world was forty-five billion. So, but of course, like Patrick also alluded to, it's a lot of crude oil and natural gas accounting for 91% of that. So we haven't been able to break it. Now, when you look at our potential in Africa, uh, by the way, I'll be sharing this slide and it's going to be uh, circulated to all, all the participants anyway. So I'm just going to fly through them because of time. So this is our we're using the International Trade Center uh, here, and this is our potential. And the idea is, look, let us see what Africa is buying from the rest of the world and see what Nigeria can supply. We have in place the Zero Oil Plan, uh, which is a plan that says Nigeria must and can, uh, you know, live in a world in which it no longer sells oil. And these are some of the projects, uh, uh, major products we have taken uh, for that. And we are also working on some key game changers on infrastructure uh, because the total federal government now is working to key field to market routes so we can move our goods up and down uh, the country. Uh, we have uh, various incentives we're using to drive this uh, for exporters. And uh, we, we have uh, uh, good success on this. Uh, payment has been done. We are settling all the debts using promissory notes from the federal government. Uh, but going forward, we are looking more on the Export Development Fund, which we can provide training and to build capacity for our exporters. Some of the ongoing projects we have that are important for this meeting is the domestic export warehouse 
establishment of an export trading company that we are now working with the uh, AfriExim Bank uh, to to do. That to be an, a big uptaker to buy our products in Nigeria and uh, to export uh, to the to the world. Uh, also working on the Anchor Borrowers Program for exporters from CBN. I also some of this uh, prioritize pro in increased production of short gestation crops. Uh, we are really looking at that. We are looking at sesame, ginger, garlic, dry hibiscus, and most importantly, capacity building and for quality and standards for the selected value chains we have chosen all across uh, Africa. Uh, right now, we're experimenting with the establishment of a Nigerian trade house in, in Lome, Togo, which we, we, we're doing with Nexport Trade, the MAN Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, and which we will in, invite Echo Bank to, to, come, to come into. So that's the international certification we're, we're choosing. Um, we're also working with a lot of women uh, for our export. Like I said, I'm going to be sharing these slides, but just an example is uh, value addition for us is very important. So you can see what we're doing with cassava. This is Casanovas, and this is currently being exported to Europe uh, for us. And you have value addition on our ginger as well and uh, particularly share, which Nigeria is the number one uh, country in the world for this. So all in all, that is NEPC for you. This is our strategy on the page and it shows you everything we're trying to do. Uh, I thank you all uh, for listening. Uh, like I said, this will be shared and I hope Ted is keeping a very stern eye on me. I hope I haven't exceeded my 10 minutes. Thank you very much. Not at all. No, thank you very much, uh, Shegu. And I think a really interesting um, overview there of um, uh, what is happening, particularly for the zero oil plan. Um, I wonder if I could start by just asking you a couple more questions about that and for clarity. I noticed that you mentioned quite a few times this issue of building capacity. Um, the lack of capacity is often talked about, and often that's to do with training. Sometimes it actually means uh, systems that need to be there or understanding. Where for you do you see the biggest gaps in capacity when it comes to the ability of Nigeria to export? And, uh, you know, how can we fill these? Uh, I, I think the most important thing is trying to move from uh, informal exports to formal exports. And, and, and that is it. The International Trade Center had estimated for us once that the, uh, the volume of in informal trade going across into Africa is about $41 billion. And that is, that is just true, but because we can move our goods anyhow. But when you come into a trade agreement uh, and you really have to regulate your borders and how goods move, then you must get all these certifications. And we can only do this by doing trainings uh, for our exporters, for our farmers, you know, for our producers, for our manufacturers, and get them to get those certifications that they will use so their goods can be in, in the shelves in other countries' um, supermarkets and, uh, uh, and shopping malls because you can't do that trade now. The volume of trade we are looking for in Africa, you can't do it under the carpet anymore. You can't do it by smuggling goods across the borders. So this is what is very important for us and we're going on, you know, the global gap uh, trainings are very important for us. You know, we're looking at kosher trainings as well and organic certifications because indeed many of our products in Africa are organic, but we don't have the certification for it. So we cannot get it across. So that is where we're really looking for, you know, for this training for, for to meet all these standards for, for, for Africa. Thank you. Um, when it comes to value addition as well, this is an interesting point that uh, many of Nigeria's exports have traditionally been for overseas markets, particularly because it's so dominated by oil. But Nigeria, of course, is the largest soft commodity producer in Africa, aside from South Africa, um, and is actually a major exporter of a whole series of different products, um, many of them, as you say, under the radar. 
Where do you see the possibility for Nigeria being able to become part of a pan-African value chain, uh, providing maybe food or certain parts for a process which might actually be finished in a neighboring country or a different part of Africa, actually part of a cross-border value chain? Yeah, that, that is very interesting. Uh, Nigeria uh, launched the Nigeria Industrial Revolution Plan. Uh, and that plan really is to fully industrialize Nigeria. And the, uh, the idea was to move from being uh, an exporter of raw materials. Uh, because we know no country you know, can really succeed just by exporting raw materials. Because you, as you do that, you are exporting your jobs, you are exporting even your, your, your future out there. So that's what we're working on. And the zero oil plan is about increased productivity and production all across these sectors for Nigeria. And then to look at the value addition, you know, for this. For instance, I'll give you a quick example. In Kashu, when we started out, we said, okay, look, we're going to have a two-legged approach for Kashu. First, scale up production, export more, and also start um, uh, uh, processing. And that is what is happening now. We've been able to increase our cashew from uh, about 170 metric tons to 300,000 metric tons. We've started uh, processing cashew now. We're exporting semi-processed. We're now about to export processed cashew, you know, all across the world. Of course, Africa is a, will be our number one market for that. So that is the way to go about it. The same for cassava, the same for ginger, the same for share you know, train them, let them know that it's traceability all the way from the farm to the processing uh, factories where we, we, we do this. So that's a big uh, game changer for Nigeria. We know we will dominate the African uh, market with our, with our goods once we, we, we get our manufacturing right. Yes, thanks. And I, I can really see that already. I mean, when I think of how prevalent, uh, you know, everyone in West Africa consumes palm oil and cassava products, and those are two of the biggest things produced in Nigeria. So it certainly makes sense. We've already seen with Dangote and sugar how Nigeria is becoming a, a production hub for food. It's quite possible it could be for all of these other ones. Uh, you did touch on the issue of traceability. This is one of the questions which has been raised. What has been done about products in particular? Um, they're asking products of animal origin. But I wonder if you have any other examples where you're actually able to trace better how these products are going through the value chain. Oh, oh, oh yes, we, we worked on a, a quality infrastructure uh, program with uh, UNIDO and uh, that's our ministry, Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment. And the idea is we, we must be able, you know, to, to trace all, you know, uh, our products from farm to the table. Uh, we had a ban on beans uh, from the EU. And what we did with, again, working with UNIDO uh, and the EU was to go back to the farms, you know, trace where the problem was. We had some, uh, uh, indeed, some poisonous things that uh, some farmers had used, which were not good. So we had to educate them on all this. And now we, we, we have a traceability uh, product for beans, which we are trying to replicate for most of our products. You know, uh, when the uh, also the National Food Safety uh, Bill is in the National Assembly, and once it's passed, it will also help to regulate this. And we need all those things, particularly now going into into Africa, because you don't want your goods to be stopped by non-tariff barriers like this, that will say, oh, you didn't meet this certification, you did this, your goods are not traceable. And then you have a problem, and that's the fear many Nigerians are having about the FCTA, that look, because of our large population, we will become a dumping ground. No, if we are determined and if we are ready to get it right, then we will be the major uh, exporters. Uh, uh, in, in Africa, because already we're a big industrial and manufacturing hub, and uh, many businesses can testify to that. 
Thank you, uh, Shego, and I would very much share that view as well. I think there's too many external views of Nigeria which just think it's about oil and gas. And if you go to the country, you can see the vast amount of potential, well, also the vast existing industry is there. Infrastructure, yeah. manufacturing, processing, it obviously just needs to be more. Um, maybe if I could just finish by um, uh, looking at this issue of uh, trade corridors and also where Nigeria fits into the Africa continental free trade area. We will be looking at this later in the panel, but maybe if you could just give your quick views on how you see Nigeria operating within the uh, Africa CFDA, bearing in mind it was a, a rather late addition to the club. Uh, well, we signed we signed late uh, because uh, the, the president was being uh, extremely cautious, like how to get things right. And the most important thing is that we have to get our power right. We have to get our transportation right for the logistics uh, uh, element of this uh, African uh, Continental Free Trade Agreement. Because if it's not right with us, then again, the question becomes, uh, uh, do we now become a dumping ground for another country that is ready? And that's the, the major focus of government was security, power, you know, and transport. We are doing a lot for in our rail system. And the rail, really, the most important thing of the rail, like I've always said to them, is to move goods. Yeah, because you're going to be subsidizing passenger movement anyway. So the only way you can make profit on that is goods. So you need that corridor, how to move your goods from all the way from Maduguri to your port in Calabar, how to move it from Castina all the way to Lagos port. And that is what, and look at all the inter-corridor linkages, you know, for that. And the roads, you know, it's now key field to market routes that we're looking at. And uh, you, your road must be good from the Lagos all the way to uh, the border in uh, in Kutonu, for example, you know, the other one to chat, you must make sure all the infrastructure is good if you want uh, trade uh, to work. And that's the most important one Nigeria is working on now. And particularly power, because you can do very little. How do you industrialize uh, with, with, with using generators? And, uh, and so we're looking also at solar power. Uh, we're looking, we're going to be looking at uh, uh battery uh renewable energy as well and that is the only way we can fully industrialize help our manufacturers so they can compete in in africa because if they cannot compete then we we, we risk becoming a dumping ground thank you very much i very much heartily agree with that one uh, i'm afraid we've run out of time uh, so i will have to bring the session to a conclusion but i would like to thank very much uh, segun awalo uh, Executive Director of the Nigeria Export Promotion Council.